AMD's Trixpoint, Intel's Lunar Lake or Qualcomm's Snapdragon. If you already know what this means, this video is for you. And if you do not, well, then this video is also for you. We had the chance to test three notebooks from Lenovo's Yoga lineup all running at different SoC. So we thought we'd put them all in one video to give you guys an overview of what to expect from the current landscape of super mobile CPUs for this sort of everyday laptop class. The Yoga is always a great choice when looking for a sensible combination of mobility, ports with decent screens and great keyboards. And the fact that, as a consumer, you can now choose between three completely different but equally valid CPU options is actually pretty awesome. So without further ado, let's see what will be the best option at the end of 2024. Before we get to our performance results, let me walk you through our review samples today. How about we kick things off with the latest one, the all-new Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 15 Aura, with Intel's Core Ultra 7 156V beating at its heart. The new Lunar Lake Silicon is betting on the integrated Arc 140V when it comes to graphics. You get 16 gigs of memory on the chip itself, alongside a 1TB SSD, and when it comes to visuals, you can feast your eyes on a 15-inch IPS touch display. The Yoga Pro 7, on the other hand, shrinks the display size to 14.5-inch, adds a high-res OLED non-touch panel, doubles the memory to 32 gigs, and bets on the Ryzen 9 365 with Team Red's RX 880M in the GPU department. This leaves us with the Slim 7X, which keeps the same screen size as its slightly bulkier Pro sibling, but scales down with the refresh rate and relies on the Snapdragon X Elite X1E 78100 to keep everything going. The Slim 7X is also the most portable of the bunch. It is lighter and quite a bit slimmer than the 7 Pro and its Lunar Lake powered sibling. Of course, the Aura is the largest, betting on a bigger display, but it's actually a bit slimmer than the AMD powered Yoga, which is quite beefy for a 14 inch device with only integrated graphics. Build quality for all three models leaves not a lot of room for complaints. There's just a very annoying creaking noise when opening up the Slim 7X, but I would be willing to forgive that for this one since I simply love the color here. Both Pro models are only available in this dull grey, which can look a bit boring or subtle depending on your perspective. The Snapdragon variant also breaks with one of the core traditions of the Yoga lineup, which usually offered pretty good I.O. for such small notebooks. However, the Slim bets exclusively on free USB-C 4.0 ports and even omits the headphone jack, which is a bit of a bummer. Lenovo mitigates this situation with an included dongle, which adds quite a few additional ports to your arsenal. Its Pro siblings do much better in this regard with a pair of USB-Cs, HDMI 2.1, a USB-A and the audio port. In the maintenance area, all notebooks offer the same, which is not a lot. Basically, you can only swap the 2242 NVMe SSD and the Wi-Fi module in the Strixpoint powered Yoga. Lenovo usually does quite well when it comes to keyboards, and Yogas are no exception, with a similar satisfying feel across all three laptops here. You get a very decent amount of travel, even on the slimmer 7X, with great tactility and a somewhat clean layout. The touchpads, on the other hand, offer a relatively sharp click that feels a bit less premium than we would have liked. Only the Slim 7 follows in the footsteps of the Pro 9 and offers a tremendously better feel. The display situation is a bit of a head-scratcher, while both the Snapdragon-powered Slim 7X and the AMD Choose Pro 7 get very good OLED panels, with the smaller variant reaching a higher brightness and offering a higher PWM frequency, the Intel Aura Yoga just gets a plain old IPS panel. It's not a bad panel, but it's also not very exciting, and since it's the only option for the Slim 7, you might feel a little left out when it comes to eye candy for your favorite Netflix shows or the like. But let's talk about performance, and instead of our usual CPU rating, we will stick to a few more selected tests that run native on the Slim 7 Access Snapdragon platform to allow for an apples to apples comparison. In Cinebench 24's multi-core torture test, the Strixpoint Pro 7 and the Slim 7X deliver almost the same results, while the Lunar Lake sibling is behind quite significantly due to its reduced 4 performance and 4 efficiency core arrangement. Geekbench paints a similar picture, and the Lunar Lake Silicon simply does not stand a chance against the 12-core CPUs found in the other two. In single-core scenarios, that changes quite drastically, so you should definitely not completely disregard Intel's latest mobile CPU here. 
On the GPU side of things, it does not look too good for the Snapdragon X Elite and its Adreno GPU, whereas both the Intel model and the AMD powered Pro 7 perform within striking distance of each other. Please enjoy our benchmarks and if you feel entertained and informed so far, please leave your like and sub if you're new here. While these are of course not your ideal gaming notebooks, I still wanted to give you some of our results. And once again, the Slim 7X doesn't look too hot here. And while the Lunar Lake 140V was performing quite well in our synthetic tests, in the real world AMD still has the edge with the 880M in the Pro 7. That performance though comes with a price, fan noise. The Pro 7 runs with much higher power levels to feed its 12-core Strix Point CPU. And it's very audible when you push it. Unfortunately, I am only able to do our noise samples with the 7X and the Pro 7, since I only had access to the Intel Slim 7 in form of an engineering sample for our video. So if you want to learn more about our measurements, please visit our website, I have linked the individual reviews down below. When it comes to battery life, we are also a little disappointed by the Pro 7. While all notebooks bet on almost identically sized batteries, the Strix Point powered laptop simply does not stand a chance here. And while the Slim 7X delivers impressive results, the Slim 7 sits on top with more than 17 hours in our Wi-Fi test. Alright folks, that should be it for today. So while all three notebooks still differ slightly in their dimensions, I would say they are still close enough to each other to directly compare what you get individually from each computing platform within the same form factor. And I actually do not want to give you my opinion here today, but rather I would really like to know what you guys think, so please sound off in the comments below. It has been quite a while since we as consumers had the chance to choose between three equally good CPUs in this mainstream space. Each still has unique advantages and disadvantages, but none have any really significant shortcomings, making all of them a very valid option at the end of 2024. So which SOC will power your next notebook? As always, thanks a ton for watching, my name is Alex, you have been fantastic and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.